This next build is the Condition Damage Renegade. This is a meta class and build and is high on the DPS charts and also easy to play in my opinion. It is a bit more expensive to gear than some of the other builds in this series though. This build would be considered a DPS role and your job is to damage the boss as much as you can while obeying mechanics. For gear I use full vipers and currently I have 4 runes of the tempest and 2 runes of the trapper, though I would recommend nightmare runes instead of the tempest because they give a bit more condition damage. But if you're lazy and cheap like me, you can use tempest or weaver runes. Your goal is to get high burn and torment duration. I use geomancy and smoldering sigils. Currently I'm using a mace and sword just for fun because I like sword, but I'd recommend mace and axe for a little bit more damage. I also have a short bow in my other set to swap to if I ever need to attack from range, but it's not necessary to have. For consumables I use rare veggie pizza and toxic focusing crystals for more condi DPS. You can use super veggie pizza instead if you're on a budget. For traits I use devastation, corruption, and renegade. In devastation I take Vicious Lacerations because I'm using Sword, but if you're using Axe, I would recommend Ferocious Strikes. You also have 7% damage increase to targets with vulnerability. Assassin's Presence, 225 ferocity to your allies around you. Uh, life Siphon damage, 20% extra damage to foes under 50% health. Critical Hits grant Torment. Torment applies Poison. When you chill, you inflict Torment. Torment lasts longer and elite skills burn. In Renegade, I take Fury, increases the duration of bleeds, gaining Fury inspires you with cause fervor, you gain Fury when you critically strike, shortbow skills pierce, bleeding you inflict deals more damage, you'll be doing bleeding from your Geomancy sigil uh, especially, so this is nice. While at full endurance, increase your chance to critically strike by 33%. So because of this trait, you'll want to not dodge as much as possible for the extra 33% critical chance. And last I take Lasting Legacy for twice as many Call of Fervor stacks, which is 10% extra condition damage on top of the regular 5 stacks of Call of Fervor. For Legends, I use Renegade and Demon, and the skills associated with those. Not much customization there. The only skills you'll really be using is Razor Claw's Rage in Renegade, and Embrace the Darkness in Demon, and of course the heals if you need. I'm not entirely sure of the best rotation, but first and foremost you will use your mace 2, Searing Fissure off cooldown, and you'll want to legend swap off cooldown to proc your Geomancy Sigil. And immediately once you enter Demon Stance, use your Elite Embrace the Darkness and keep that up until you swap to Renegade, then immediately use Razor Claw's Rage. Make sure you place this skill so the area of effect encompasses as many teammates as possible because it affects a total of 5 people, which helps your DPS and while in Renegade, I also like to use the F3, Citadel Bombardment, and I also like to occasionally use the Mace 3 to blast in the Searing Fissure to blast Area Might. Also, you should try not to interrupt the auto-attack chain of the Mace, as the third and final strike applies a lot of poison, though don't worry about it too much. Also, try your hardest to refrain from dodging, because at full endurance you get the extra critical hit chance, and critical hits are required to put out more torment. You can use the Axe 5 between auto-attack chains if you wish, also, the Axe 5 and the Sword 5 are hard CCs and can help against break bars, though that's about the extent of the CC for this build. Also, if your team is struggling with Might, you can use your F2 Heroic Command off cooldown to keep up 10 Might on 5 people, though this does use up quite a bit of your energy, leaving less for your DPS skills. So, as you can see from the chart down here, 35% of your damage is coming from the Burning, 25 from the Torment, 13 from the bleeding, 8 from the poison, and then the rest of your attacks follow. If you're going to make a one skill macro for this build, which binds multiple skills to your one so you can spam them off cooldown, I would bind your one, your two, and your swap legends button so you can do them all off of cooldown. To recap, this is a pretty easy build to play with great results. A bit limited on customization and a little expensive, but worth it in my opinion. If you have any comments on this build, or advice for new players playing the build, or builds of your own that you'd like to share that'll help new players, please leave those in the comment section below, and I'll see you all in the next build video. Thanks.